Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started with the, uh, the session. So this is the second year that we've done the showcase. Uh, we're going to have a chance to hear from all, all of the different interns in the different mentored summer, uh, summer coding projects that Fedora is involved with and get to hear about some of their project work. You'll also learn about some of the different mentored projects that uh, the programs that Fedora is involved with. And you'll also get to hear from a panel of mentors later about different career opportunities in open source, uh, best practices for mentors, and other opportunities to get involved with the Fedora community. Uh, before we get started, I wanted to say a big thanks to our program administrators, Sumantro, uh, Brian Axelbeard, who could not be here, and Laura Abbott for Outreachy. So these is a, they do a lot of work that's in the background and is not super visible all the time. So can we just give them a big round of applause for all their hard work? So a quick overview of how this is going to run today. We'll have, you'll hear a little bit from our different program admins about the different uh, programs we're involved with. We'll do, the first, we'll do five interim presentations to start off with. We'll switch to the mentor panel after that. And then we'll wrap up with the last four. And any leftover time we have will be unstructured social time, hang out and chat a little bit. So with that, I'm going to go and hand over the mics to our program admins, Laura for Outreachy and Sumantro for Google Summer of Code and uh, Google Code In. So Laura, do you want to start off with? Good morning, everyone. Uh, for those who don't know me, I'm Laura Abbott. My official job title is Fedora Kernel Engineer, but one of the things I also do is coordinate the Outreachy program. For those who aren't familiar with Outreachy, Outreachy originally started as the uh, GNOME outreach project for women started by the GNOME Foundation and was designed to help get more women into open source because uh, based on their reviewing statistics it was found that there were a remarkably few number of women uh, contributing to Google Summer of Code. Since then the program has expanded to include uh, other underrepresented groups in open source and it is, today it's just known as Outreachy. Um, Outreachy is run twice a year. It's designed to give underrepresented groups uh, a chance to con contribute to a full-time project. It's paid. Um, it's uh, all open, various groups of open source get a chance to contribute. Fedora has done it off and on over the past years. Uh, Fedora did it during when we're still going uh, to outreach for women. Um, and I think that's about all I have to say about Outreachy right now. I'm happy to talk more about it offline. But and, uh, once again, thank you for everyone who has done it in the past. Um, I feel I should acknowledge Mo Duffy, who did coordination and helped run the program uh, bef some, somewhat before I took over as well. And yes, thank you, everyone. Thanks. So hey, good morning. I'm Shumantro. And uh, I am the, uh, my official job title is Fedora QA. And I coordinate with Brian Excel Beard for Google Code In and Google Summer of Code that I'll be talking about in a bit. So Google Code In is targeted towards 13 to 17 year old high school students. Essentially, it's the, the purpose is to serve as a, like, uh, a starting ground for students to get op familiarized with open source, the culture, and the ethics and how they can like kind of start writing very small programs or documentation, QA, anything for that matter. Um, the the idea of Coden, uh, so we, Fedora did not participate in Coden for a long amount of time. This is the first, last year was the first time, or rather the second time we did it, and um, we ran super successfully. I would like to thank Vipul who has taken part in it as an org admin, and he has done a fantastic job in making sure that we, we Make we, we did the first code in write. Uh, Fedora is supposed to participate this year as well, and we are hopeful to have more mentors uh, who would help us understand our right tasks for students. Um, the the idea idea of like so when a person or a student graduates out of code in, they can actually go ahead and have something like Google Summer of Code. Uh, Summer of Code is mostly like a full functional project, and it's not just small tasks that they have to finish. It's mostly about a full function project, and you would kind of see uh, m the mentees showcase their projects and how they have been working on the, the whole summer. 
uh, the idea of Google Summer of Code was to kind of make sure that a person understands the philosophy of the project. They kind of bond with the community, and then they try to adopt the best practices that the project follows while they are making the software. So essentially, you, you, you would find most of these mentees talking about the, the number of challenges they faced and how they over, overcome it with the community. And you would basically find more and more people getting involved in Google Summer of Code. Yeah, as far as the statistics goes, there's a lot of contribution coming out from uh, India. There are a lot of contributors coming out of India, and which is good for us in, in terms of how, how we scale up the Google Summer of Code in the coming years. So yes, uh, um, like I would be more than enough interested to talk to any one of you about how we can make Google Summer of Code and GCI better in Fedora, so moving forward. And that's mostly all about me. Um, thanks, everyone, for coming here. At least, and I would like to move on with the project so showcase. Yeah. All right, thank you, Laura, and thank you, Sumantro. So here's going to be our outline for the presentation. So we'll go ahead and get started with the crank presentation first. Um, and we'll take a break about halfway through for coffee, right before we start the mentor panel. Uh, Linka, are you here? Excellent. Hi, I'm Linka Segura. Um, I'm an outreach intern from uh, the past winter round. My mentor is Alexandra Fedorova. There. <laughs> and my project was to create a command line interface tool which I called Crank for Pagur. Oh, sorry. Okay, it's it's playing the second video, not the first one. So this one is about creating the pull request. Um, there's necessary a title, and you see it's not possible. It doesn't work because uh, an API token is necessary. So what's happening? You go to crank, you see command crank config, and that prompts you to, to get the API token on the web page. Then there is a tool which um, helps guess the URL of repo and the and, uh, <laughs> domain URL, and it works. The pull request is open. And you can also merge it with crank merge PR. You need a request ID. And it's successfully merged. Yeah, it's there. No, there's the <laughs> what? No, there's the second video, which is the first video. <laughs> this one, yeah. So this one is about getting the PRs and the issues. Can I get issues? No, this is the old one. They're they're the same. <laughs> <laughs> I have them here on my laptop. Like, if you yeah, that, that's the same video. <laughs> oh, okay, never mind. So, <laughs> okay. Mm. So the first video <laughs> was about uh, commands uh, crank get issues and crank get PRs. Uh, for this, it's not necessarily any API token, mm. and it's always uh, done from the current uh, from the current directory. And uh, yes, I tested it; it works. If you want to try it for yourself, uh, it's uploaded on uh, PyPy. You can put uh, crank, um, pip install crank; it should work. And uh, <laughs> okay, I'll have to continue with my presentation without slides. So what I wanted to say 
is that um, what I took away, there was a lot. Community-wise and tech-wise, I uh, learned a lot about what pull request is, what is the work in, what is the workflow. Uh, I learned I learned to think about the user experience because before writing it, I had to do the research, the check the other command line interfaces, the think about the structure of the commands, not to be, so they would not be random, they would follow some structure. Um, and uh, also take away a lot of uh, community-wise. I got involved in the open source community. I even made a package for Fedora. So I have, I'm Fedora Packager. <laughs> With one package. And I would like to thank all who are organizing outreach programs and Google Summer of Code because it was an awesome experience. And I was even able to get the job after that. Yay. <laughs> Thanks for your attention. All right, so next up we have creating a set comp profile for a container using Podman. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Devanj. Uh, so this summer I was working on generating, uh, working with Podman with Valentin and Dan. Uh, Dan couldn't join here, sadly. So, uh, so I was working for, with uh, Podman to, ge uh, to generate a set comp profile for individual containers. So generating a set comp profile for a container using Podman. So uh, what's set comp? For those who don't know here, uh, the sec seccomp is a Linux security feature uh, which uh, blocks, uh, which filters syscall by a process. So may almost every container engine uses a seccomp to uh, secure its, uh, secure the container, secure the host. So uh, Podman ships with the default seccomp profile which blocks around 44 syscalls, which is really which has, uh, which is really loose for, for certain um, certain uh, certain workloads because we don't need a lot of syscalls. Like if you want to run LS, you don't need around 200 syscalls to run LS. Uh, I skipped if, uh, a thing in between. So uh, let me talk about Podman first. So Podman is a container engine, which uh, just like Docker and so. Podman is designed to uh, run OCI containers in pods, and containers can run in rootless or uh, root mode, so that's pretty great. It works on fork exec model rather than a daemon model by uh, Docker. So it's a uh, tad bit lighter than Docker. So uh, yeah, I was talking about why I worked on this project. So the idea was to trace all the syscalls made by the container and generate a seccom profile using the all the syscalls. So how uh, the initial proposal I wrote uh, involved using ptrace. So ptrace is a syscall which uh, which gives the command of the sub process to its uh, the one uh, the, the process above that uh, at every step, and the the process can inspect its registers to check which syscall has been run. So. Uh, the initial proposal was to use ptrace to trace all the syscalls made by the container. But uh, there was a problem uh, that uh, ptrace slows down the, uh, the, the uh, running of the container and some time-based decisions can be affected. Uh, uh, also, ptrace uh, can't, uh, I, could, I wasn't able to get all the syscalls using ptrace because uh, some syscalls uh, are required by run C, which makes the container before uh, the before applying the seccom profile. So uh, after that, we tried using the audit daemon in, in the Linux kernel. Uh, uh, they, uh, when you apply a seccom profile, uh, the you can either block it or log it or trace it and many other things. So we tried to log every syscall made, made by the container by applying a profile which logs all the containers. Uh, logs all the syscalls, but uh, the problem we encountered there was that we weren't able to figure out in a nice way that which proce which process belongs to which container and does it uh, is it in a container or not. So uh, there was a workaround about that that uh, the audit daemon was adding a container ID to uh, to the audit uh, to the subsystem 
but that couldn't be merged in uh, in the right time so we had to move past that then we tried using ebpf to trace all the syscalls so uh, what's ebpf ebpf is uh, extended berkeley packet filter uh, so seccom is also uh, implemented in bpf so bpf uh, was is also was also used in uh, filtering packets and all but now it's extended and you can write your own uh, pro com uh, programs to run inside the kernel rather than writing kernel modules. Uh, so it compiles on the fly and gets uh, att attaches to certain code paths in the kernel so in order to trace all the syscalls being made. Uh, it, it's, all, it's, uh, it's now used in making tracing tools, networking tools, and a lot more. So it's still being explored what can, what, what it, what can it do and all. So uh, this summer, uh, I had two things to do, research and implement the tool, and merge the tool upstream with the help of the mentors. So uh, the PR is still open, waiting for some CI fixes. Uh, uh, other than that, the tool is working, and uh, it runs on a simple interface. So you have to pass annotations uh, to the CLI, and then it generates the profile. Uh, you have to provide it the path of the prof uh, name of the file you want to create and then you can use the profile simply. Okay, so the major takeaways uh, by working on this project this whole summer was that yeah, uh, it, sound, it may sound silly but, uh, but after doing this project I feel like uh, I didn't, before that I didn't feel that there were people on the other side of the screen like I could, there was, uh, I couldn't approach people or something. So. After the project, I was like, if I can approach everyone. People are willing to help. It's really great, awesome. So, and like, I had some initial anxiety about contributing to open source. This project helped me a lot in getting started. And uh, uh, yeah, so working uh, and the logistics of a large project. So earlier than that, I hadn't encountered CI and like working with huge project with a. With, many levels of abstraction and I had to work my way through it and uh, write that uh, and working remotely. So, so I thought that working remotely is really, really hard and I don't know how I'll do it. So fortunately I was able to work through that. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. So now we have the Fedora GUI Karma presentation. So what I worked on is a so uh, Fed it's, uh, the project is Fedora GUI Karma, and it, uh, it's basically a user interface for Fedora Easy Karma, which I guess most of you are familiar with. What it does is like it connects with Bodhi and uh, lists the packages that are available on Bodhi and lets you post Karma, and basically that's, that's pretty much it. So let's go to project demo. Uh, so this is uh, what my application looks like. Looks like when I started up. Uh, you have to first log it, log in. Uh, I'm doing. Uh, I'm log. Uh, I'm fetching the packages of uh, old uh, releases because uh, I don't want to spam the new new ones. So um, yeah, it works. I logged in. So now uh, what I'll do is I'll fetch packages. And yeah, so both these servers are pretty slow right now, so it takes a bit of time to fetch some packages. Then uh, let's get Python PySoc package. I get the, I, I get to post a comment, so let's say I'll just post it works. And the karma is zero, it's minus one or one and then I'll just select zero karma and then submit. Uh, wait a second, yeah, uh, the karma is posted. You can uh, like fetch it again to get the like uh, all, uh, different karmas that are already posted. It, it, it should show your karma after like you fetch it again. And uh, yeah, it works, so like that. That's my, the, it works, basically, yes. And that's pretty much it. Mm. 
what did I take away? So before this, I've never contributed to a community or a big project which has been uh, already been like out there. So and so like working with the community is a nice thing to do. Like it's it's nice. I, I liked it, and uh, it was also nice working with people I I've never never met before. So working, I was working with Sumantro, my mentor, and like I've never met him before. Flock, so yeah, it was nice working with. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. So I'm Alicia Mahanti. So I'm an outreach intern working on Fedora Happiness Packet. Uh, so I'm here to share my experience. So. Uh, so what is Happiness Packet? So ha Fedora Happiness Packet is a platform where we send emails and messages to people showcasing, like uh, sh sharing our love and gratitude for them. Then uh, Fedora Happiness Packet actually aimed to make the people feel good about themselves. It's, uh, I know like in, uh, in our culture, like in Fedora, we actually do that, but using Fedora Happiness Packet, we just make it a bit explicit. Then we have Happiness Archive in our uh, in our website, which aims to like, uh, which is a kind of a hub where all the messages that we have sent is being showcased. So we just need uh, like uh, the messages that are being sent in order to showcase in the Happiness Archive. So the sender has to agree along with the recipient. And then, yeah, it gets showcased. Then, uh, OK, when we have the liberty to uh, showcase love and greetings, we also have the freedom to use it wrongly. So if we get an abusive message, so we can blacklist the person who sent it, uh, we just uh, report to the admins of uh, Fedora Happiness Packet. And, and what is an abusive message? OK, anything that. Uh, this obeys Fedora's code of conduct. Anything like any harsh comment or any hatred or any all the bad stuff is what we uh, is abusive message here. Okay. So what are the privacy concerns? Like uh, when we send a Fedora happiness packet to someone, then the message gets sent to the recipient via an email, and it is uh, and if the person agrees to showcase in the happiness archive along with the recipient, then it gets showcased in the happiness archive. That's. So what I did in the project is that I implemented with fast user search, user search where uh, we can send a Fedora happiness packet to any of the fast users by with the knowledge of only their fast user ID. We just retrieve their mails and name and we can send them happiness packets. Then more of my project was concerned with testing Fedora happiness packet. So uh, now we have a test coverage of almost 93%, and I'm planning to increase in the forthcoming weeks. Uh, earlier, Fedora happiness packet was tested using Django's unit test. So I migrated the test to PyTest, which is a really a good, uh, good platform. Then I also ensured that the test cases are robust. And uh, OK, I got introduced to mocking. And uh, I tested the fast user search that I implemented by using mocking with PyTest mock. I also incorporated Fed menu uh, so that it gets connected to rest of the Fedora applications. I also improved the discoverability of the admin portal uh, by incorporating it in the UI so that it can be more accessible. I all, OK, now Fedora Happiness Packet is a uh, fork of Happiness Packet. So the UI is very similar to the Happiness Packet and not consistent with the rest of the Fedora's UI. So I designed FHP for consistency with the rest of the Fedora, uh, Fedora apps. That's, uh, that's, those are my accomplishments. Now, the takeaways are like, uh, okay. The good programming. Okay. 
uh, my takeaways were okay uh, always the documentation does not come that handy so i referred blogs and for a beginner blogs come more handy and useful because we get a deeper insight uh, and does not get lost in all those technical terms then uh, i was very lucky to have an awesome mentor justin who was very helpful and every time even i was very free to ask silly doubts so thanks justin for that uh, there's uh, okay there's always a way so what happened i asked justin if uh, i could incorporate a functionality and i thought if that functionality already present and justin said uh, if it's not we can ask the maintainers to make that so it was easy i thought like how it could be but yeah there's always a way that what if i like the things we think that impossible that can be made actually we just need to minimize the gap between their existence and our knowledge of knowing it so yeah and also uh, i feel rereading documentation is also handy because uh, the first time we read documentation it's like it's very overwhelming for my part as a beginner so every time i reread the documentation i find something new something interesting and something worth learning so yeah so here's nothing is impossible thank you and now we have one more happiness packets presentation Hello, I'm Shraddha. Uh, I was working on Fedora Happiness Packets as well, as Alicia just explained. So I was working more in the back end and the DevOps part of it. Um, so my first job in this was to integrate batches into Fedora Happiness Packets. I migrated initially, Fedora, uh, Fedora Happiness Packets had FedMessage. I migrated from FedMessage to the new Fedora Messaging. Uh, then I also made a PyPy package for the messaging module. Uh, for the same, I made an RPM package as well. Um, I made the YAML rules for the batches. And while integrating Fedora messaging and making the RPM and the PyPy package, I encountered some uh, in the documentation, like some additions that I could do, which I also integrated. Uh, in the backend features, I uh, made the web access, uh, I made the uh, web interface for the sender and the received messages so that you could uh, change the uh, privacy uh, settings. Uh, I also uh, migrated the entire application from Python 2 to Python 3 and from Django 1.11 to Django 2.0. Uh, I. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that, thank you. <laughs> Uh, I also integrated the Visivic text editor, so now you can like send fancy messages too. Uh, I, so during the development, we had this uh, really tiresome issue that we always had to build the containers again. So I also uh, made the auto reload code change so that uh, it could be done like on the fly uh, for the backend as well as the templates. Um, and I also made the uh, custom admin interface as well as uh, so uh, automatically admin access to a couple of users which are in the config files that will be automatically uh, given. Apart from all of that, I was also working on um, uh, deploying the entire uh, application on OpenShift. Uh, that is still under progress, so I didn't put it up on the slides. And yeah, so my takeaways from the entire thing was uh, I am not very good with communication with people even face to face, so uh, on a screen, that was even more difficult. But yeah, uh, Justin was an amazing mentor. He made the communication very easy. Yona, if she's here, she was awesome. Alberto, so I had great mentors, which made that part really easy for me. And uh, documentation, definitely. I was working with Minishift, OpenShift, uh, Python 2 to Python 3, Django. And uh, a lot of that required documentation. I had to look a couple of places for Fedora Messing as well. So whenever I encountered something which could be improved, uh, I definitely uh, contributed to the documentation as well. So yeah, that was me. Thank you.